Good Sunday morning and welcome to Alliance First Christian Church in Alliance, Ohio. Uh, my name is Mike Doak. I am the interim pastor here. And I'm pleased today to have our celebrants uh, bringing this worship service to you at home. Uh, I would encourage you at this time, if you wish, to maybe uh, pause your viewing so you have time to obtain some crackers or simple bread and uh, some juice that uh, when it comes time for us to celebrate the Lord's table together, uh, that you will have those with you. Uh, I'm pleased this morning to have uh, serving again with us our celebrants, uh, Paula Goldman, the chair of our elders, and uh, this morning uh, Dave uh, Samson is here to play guitar for us at the table. We have uh, Steve Scafidi up in our sound room and Eve Locker handling our video, and of course uh, Jerry Scafidi, if she hasn't moved on me, she has already, uh, providing uh, our organ and piano music today. Uh, welcome to Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, you may have already received this week's copy of The Messenger. Uh, I always champion this because it's a great way for you to receive either in print or electronically the things going on, our, on at our church. Uh, as we continue uh, to reach out to our community and to celebrate. Uh, also on your viewing today will be a copy of today's worship folder, the bulletin, and uh, the prayer list, most importantly the prayer list. So if you'll click on that, uh, you can uh, join in with us throughout this week as we lift up in prayer the concerns that are shared there. Uh, Knowing of no other announcements this morning, uh, I encourage you at home to uh, view the uh, lyrics to our opening hymn, which is Come People of the Risen uh, King, and that will be displayed, as I said, on the overhead. So let us come and worship God together. <laughs> Oh 
we rejoice when we come into the house of the Lord, for he is here. He is present with us through the power of his risen and conquering Holy Spirit. So amen to us this morning. Our call to worship today on Good Shepherd Sunday comes from the 23rd Psalm. Uh, I don't know that there's another psalm uh, so, uh, so deep and rich in the tradition of the treasury of David. Uh, so if you at home will join with us here in the sanctuary, uh, let us come rejoicing that we have a good shepherd and that he does lead us. So let us together join in the recitation of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our call to prayer today um, leads us to lift up many, many names in the life of this church and beyond. And so this morning we begin uh, with our sympathies uh, to several families. Uh, first of all, to Cliff Grove and his family on the death of his brother George this past week. Uh, likewise, we lift up sympathy to Amy Stafford on the death of her brother-in-law this week and also to Dee Bennett, uh, who is a friend of our church family, whose daughter Kim uh, passed away since last we worshiped. And so we take comfort in that 23rd Psalm. There's one word in, in that Psalm that has always impressed me, and it's the word through. What I mean by that is the Lord doesn't say, I'll walk with you up to the valley of the shadow of death, and then you're left to your own. Nor does he say, I'll, I'll meet you on the other side of that. What the psalm says is, I will go with it, uh, with you through the valley of the shadow of death. And we certainly pray uh, that these families will experience the throughness of, of the Good Shepherd today. We do want to lift up in continuing prayer, uh, Melissa uh, Browning's mother, Pat Greathouse, uh, she is home from the hospital, uh, but is under uh, uh, quarantine for 14 days because it's possible she was exposed to the COVID virus. Uh, we continue to lift up our friend uh, Linda Mosley, uh, who will be beginning a new round of treatments on May the 8th. We pray those will be successful in healing. Uh, Mark Bishop and Carol Bradway uh, are, are both continuing uh, to improve, and we keep our prayers around them. Uh, we lift up John Williams this morning, uh, who had a fall at home and some difficulty following, but he is back home from treatment, uh, and he will be receiving therapy, so we're, we're thankful for that. And uh, we also lift up Jan Buchanan this morning, uh, who is back home uh, following care at our local community care. There are a great number of other names uh, that we have on our prayer folder this week. And as I said, I encourage you to click on that, be in prayer for them all, as we are throughout each week here. Uh, and so as we come unto the throne of grace, of God's mercy, the one who has sent us the Good Shepherd, uh, let us bow our hearts and open them before that throne of grace and mercy as we come together in prayer. O Lord, our shepherding God, come close to us now. Come near to us in time of need. O sender of the great shepherd, we need one in our time of anxiety, 
We need you in this time of economic uncertainty. We need you especially in a time of globe-trotting diseases. We need you to bind our wounds, to pour your healing ointment upon our heads. We need the briars, the brambles, the burrs pulled from our skin and our fleece. O oh, shepherding God, you guide us with just the sound of your voice. Come help us to listen and to follow, no matter where your voice leads us. Give us a measure of trust that we may follow. O oh, shepherding God, protect us from hired hands that may not really care for us or have neglected or abused us in the past. O sender of the Good Shepherd, we thank you for your Son, who laid down his life for the sheep, who comes and calls together those who are not yet of your fold, and yet the gate is open. Lord, we pray for those who do not yet know the Good Shepherd, who by life circumstance have been kept from knowing him, we pray that by our own actions, our behavior, that we reach out into this community, that more and more they may come to know His voice. O shepherding God, renew us and guide us with Your love, and put a new peace within us as we pray now the prayer that our Savior gave to us always and everywhere to pray saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning continues on that theme built and established on the 23rd Psalm of the Good Shepherd. And uh, this teaching comes to us today from John's Gospel in the 10th chapter. Um, it, it builds upon what happens in the ninth chapter. I'll get to that in a moment. But let us uh, uh, tune our ears uh, to God speaking to us through the Holy Spirit in these words. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter by the sheep pen through the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come to me before are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and they will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Yet I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. 
Then the wolf attacks and the flock scatters. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus' teaching to us this Sabbath morning reaches deep into the well of biblical imagery in our gospel text from John. Shepherds and the flocks entrusted to them are first mentioned in the fourth chapter of Genesis, when Abel is appointed a keeper of herds. And this imagery continues throughout our Christian scriptures, all the way to the final book, Revelation, where the Lamb of God is seated upon the throne. Throughout the books of the prophets, God counsels that appointed leaders care for their people as a good shepherd cares for the flock. Earliest Christians uh, adorned the graves of the catacombs beneath Rome with images of Jesus carrying a lamb upon his shoulders and we have one of those mosaics today uh, as the art illustration uh, in our bulletin when you click on that. The Good Shepherd is the one who will leave the 99 and search for and redeem the one lamb which is strayed. So Good Shepherd Sunday is set aside this fourth Sunday of Easter in order that we might rejoice that Jesus fulfills the role to which he has been called by our Heavenly Father. He will stand and feed his flock. The Good Shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd will lead them out and back to green pastures. He will lead them beside still waters. And yes, he will restore our souls. Johann Sebastian Bach picked up on many of these same images when composing the lyrical piece, Sheep May Safely Graze. I think that was in 1713. It's still one of the most uh, popular of the pastorals in classic music. If you get a chance today, uh, go click on that and listen to it. Uh, Sheep May Safely Graze. It is helpful for us, however, to hear Jesus' allegory of the Good Shepherd against the backdrop of what happened in that preceding chapter, chapter 9 of John's Gospel. Very quickly, Jesus has healed a man born blind. And this healing, if you can believe it, causes quite a stir. Part of the problem is that Jesus' healing occurs on a Sabbath day when no work was to be performed. Lost in all the bickering about these regulations is the fact that a wondrous miracle of God has taken place. And yet the bickering between the healed man, his family members, and the Pharisees goes on and on for several verses. And it only concludes with the healed man, once captive to blindness from birth, why he's tossed out from the gathering of the religious authorities. Think about that for the moment. He's been healed, uh, he's been examined, and the only response is to 
toss him out. The healed man then encounters Jesus again. And he gives thanks. And he worships Jesus as Lord. Observing this, a few of the Pharisees curtly ask, What, are we blind to? And Jesus' reply is simply this. If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. It's against this tension of seeing and not seeing that Jesus brings forth then his teaching about the Good Shepherd. And if it'll help, think of this teaching as uh, several flights of, of stairs, each connected by a landing as you turn and take the next flight. Uh, sorry, but that's the closest I can come to a helpful illustration. This first flight of stairs that we climb takes us above that realm of religious elitism as picked up with the Pharisees. You see, the primary role of the shepherd is to care for the flock and trust it to them, to bind up any wounds and, and to ensure that none are lost. That, that's, that, that's the ground level here. And Jesus does just this when he encounters the man blind from birth because he takes notice of one of the flock of Israel who is suffering. Now this begs the question, how many times the religious elite among the Pharisees may have walked right past the same blind man but took no notice of him? perhaps adopting the belief that the man was born blind because of his own sin or that of his parents. Who knows? Jesus' own disciples, though, ask this very same question in the opening of chapter 9. Who sinned, this man or his parents? But Jesus' reply is that no one sinned here, neither the man nor his parents. Instead, this man's plight is better understood as an opportunity for the works of God to be displayed. The Good Shepherd, you see, has eyes that scan over the landscape, looking for lost sheep, searching to heal and redeem, which begs the question, even though the religious elite have eyes, what are they seeing in their daily lives? Entering by the gate, in Jesus' analogy, means simply doing the work which God wills that we do. You and I might say it comes down to having the right heart. Oh, people can go through the motions of carrying out God's will, but unless it comes from that inward motivation and inclination to love God and God's people, the shepherd is just a hireling who is likely to flee at the first sign of trouble or difficulty. I've never kept sheep. So I don't know what I'm talking about here, but apparently sheep can sense this because Jesus notes that they will not follow the voice of a stranger. Well, the next flight of stairs, we've, we've gotten to that first landing, we're gonna turn and go up the next flight, has to do with protection. It's one thing to seek to do the will of the Father, to search out the lost and bind up the wounded, ensuring that none are lost. But it's quite another matter entirely to stick with that task when our own life was put in jeopardy. You know, sheep are easy pickings when it comes to self-defense. They're not very swift at running. They have no claws nor sharp fangs. Jesus says of himself, I am the gate for the sheep. I have read where shepherds uh, often position themselves across the opening of a stone sheep pen at night 
so that nothing comes or goes without having to step on the shepherd first. And perhaps this is what our Lord has in mind when he positions himself as our gate, that no harm shall come without him being the first to take notice. Yet our Lord climbs one more flight of stairs on the Sabbath day. He lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus speaks of one flock and one shepherd, referring to other sheep that are not yet of his sheep pen. John records this very simply. Jesus says, I must bring them also. He's speaking beyond the heartache of trying to redeem Israel, the first flock. Our Lord is making reference to us, Gentiles, who are like sheep without a shepherd. Not only is God's eternal will that Israel be redeemed, but that sheep from other folds be gathered together and brought into the sheep pen of his mercy and care. My friends, this is a resurrection text. That's why it belongs in the season of Easter. It's appropriate for our continuing celebration of Easter because the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, even those from another fold. One flock, one shepherd, the good shepherd. And Jesus is emphatic in this text in John that no one takes his life from him. He himself lays it down only to pick it up again. And this power comes from the glory of our Father and his Father. Like the man blind from birth, Jesus' resurrection is a divine opportunity to reveal something magnificent, magnificent about the glory of God. And those who have eyes will see it. I cannot help but think that Good Shepherd Sunday comes just in a time such as this, this year. We are in the first week of May. It's been a long season since we last heard of shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night in Luke's version of the birth of Jesus. May brings with it our tender regard for all that our mothers mean to us on Mother's Day, which is a week from today. It's also the month in which we celebrate our graduates, both from high school and university. May concludes with our gratitude for fallen patriots as we decorate the graves of veterans and loved ones who gave their lives for our freedoms. And one thing that ties together all of these May celebrations is the debt we owe to those who have been good shepherds to us, our mothers our teachers and coaches and counselors, our veterans. We may not like to be considered sheep. It's not all that flattering, is it? But where would we be without the voices of these good shepherds calling us by name, standing watch over us as we learn first to stand for ourselves? Where would we be if these good shepherds had not placed their bodies across the threshold of the pen while we slept? Have they not also laid down their own lives that we might have life? Yes, we come today to give thanks to God for the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And we come this whole month to give thanks for all of his under shepherds who because of him have been so good to us. May the Lord bless you. Amen.
Part of the 23rd Psalm is that the Lord has prepared a table for us, often in the midst of our enemies. Well, you and I have no enemies here. We come as one flock under one shepherd. And before we come to that table, uh, we owe a great debt to our Heavenly Father. And so we come confessing our need for a good shepherd, for Jesus Christ. And so if you will join with me in our call to confession this day, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And now I invite uh, the chair of our elders, Paula Goldman, to come and lead us to this table. Every day we are changing. We are being changed through the death of our Savior, which brings us forgiveness for our sins. And we are being changed through Jesus' resurrection, by which we are raised to walk through green pastures in newness of life. In the jumble of the circumstances of this past week, may our eyes be opened to see God's eternal purpose for us and our world. And may our eyes be focused on the Good Shepherd. The cross of Jesus can help us bring into focus that he is the Good Shepherd, that we are his flock, that he knows us by name, and that he willingly laid down his life for us. When we partake of the bread this morning, we remember Christ's broken body and are reminded once again of the patience of sacrificial love and the power of the resurrection. We are reminded too that this bread is a symbol of our risen Lord. While on earth, Jesus shared our flesh and blood and understands what we go through each day. He sees the changes we are experiencing and comforts us with his indwelling spirit. In blessing and drinking this cup today, we are mindful and grateful for the blood Jesus shed for us. As we partake of the Holy Communion, may it strengthen and sustain us until that day when our faith becomes sight. Although our daily lives are changing, God's love for us is constant, and Jesus is and forever will be our Good Shepherd, who leads us to green pastures, to have fullness of life. Let us pray. O oh God, whose kingdom will come, whose will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven, open our eyes to see your purposes for us and open our hearts to do what you want of us. May your Holy Spirit fill us with the assurance that in this ever-changing world, you are our Good Shepherd, and we are your sheep. We are yours, and we are here to serve you through our faith as we follow your word. In the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup, May we once again be reminded of your forgiveness for our shortcomings, for your promise to lead us to green pastures, and for the resurrection of your beloved Son, our living Lord and Savior. In the name of the Good Shepherd, who knows us by name and gives us fullness of life, we do pray. Amen.
In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And now may the Lord bless and keep you. 
May he make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you now and forevermore. Go forth following the Good Shepherd. Amen, and God bless.